Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to this week's Fateless Podcast discussion. Going to be joined by Sham, Saf, and Simon Hades, aka. We never know what to say, by the way, with our gamer handle and our real name. <laughs> Whatever, we're going to roll with it. I'm yeah. Brad Chosen. And today we're going to be talking about some of our core key concepts around champion design. What are some of the things that are the most important to us? Some of the concepts that we're diving into our project and what we're kind of considering when it comes to all the different champion aspects of design in our game. So, uh, Sham, would you like to start us off with anything uh, on your mind currently in, in in that realm? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's what we've been working on like a lot lately. So we've, you know, we've, we've kind of built a bunch of systems around, you know, how we, how we design their stats. And we're now really finally starting to, to be able to dive into ability design and, you know, at every level, you basically realize that there's another like piece of the onion you have to unpeel, right? To understand like, oh crap, we need to know all the bosses. Well, what do the bosses do? Well, wh what is this ca champion counter? And, and so it's like, you know, and, and we knew that going in, but it, there's, there's just so many layers that we have to kind of like, like get through before we can really say, okay, now we've designed a champion or a set of champions and those champions fit these roles in these positions and they're going to be exciting and fun for people to collect and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it's a, it's a great discussion um, to just have talk about like what we're, what we're excited about, how we're thinking about um, designing, you know, what makes a, a, a good champion, what makes kind of a not that interesting champion. And like, so our, I guess the other thing we wanted to talk about was our approach um, to, you know, kind of this exclusivity that seems to be kind of a trend uh, right now, like in, in, in the gotcha, in the gotcha realm. So, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe Simon, you want to kick us off around that. Like, I know you've, you've got some, some opinions on that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think before I do that, so just on one of the points you just mentioned there. So I think we've learned a lot from a number of games now, both in this genre and in other genres as well. And things like having interesting differences for a champion. And by that, generally in this, this genre, I think fun passives or legendary champions, epic champions, which give them the reason to have that kind of like increase in rarity is something that we've learned. So it's not just, do they look good? Do they have a good skill set of abilities? It's also what makes them stand out in a certain either piece of content or in a certain environment, which um, generally for us, we think that's going to be driven by passives. And, and that's, that's like a really big part of what we want to do. So you've got both this element of what's it stat stat levels. And then we could kind of like measure stats of, of certain level of heroes versus others, then go, okay, well, what abilities do we want? Let's make sure we get a good spread for our faction and then a good spread throughout the game. And then also like, okay, now how do we make this champion fit, fit their theme, I guess? You know, we're doing myths, legends, gods. Well, how do we make sure that that, that passive or those passives fit the theme of that champion? So they're excited and people think, yes, I get why they've done that. So, um, so yeah, and, and it's definitely interesting. So we was like, yeah, let's just start doing abilities. And it's like, well, hold on a minute. Kind of want to make sure that the champions at least counter a certain boss or right, bosses. Abilities or we, against know, the blood, right? we know where they're going to be good. And it's like, well, I guess we got to design all the bosses then. <laughs> so that was like, <laughs> so yeah, yeah the, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. But, the um, order of operations gets really difficult because you're like, okay, let's, let's start designing champions. It's like, well, wait, what are all the buffs and debuffs we want? And then what do all those buffs and debuffs do? Well, yeah. and then we need to know what 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 abilities they need to counter bosses. Okay, wait, we got to go design the bosses. Uh, like so, like it just gets tough to kind of get everything to mesh. And, and, at the and, same it's, like, time. and it's like, well, then what are in the waves? What are the waves before before the bosses? If we're gonna have waves, okay, yeah. well, well, but crap, now we need to know that. Like so, yeah, there's there's a lot of like you just kind of we it's were just a lot of chicken and egg stuff, isn't it? It's just like yeah. which, which direction should we go? But anyway, like total total side point. But I thought it was, it was fun because yeah. as I was hearing you talked about it, it's like well we've. It's kind of like when we were setting up Fateless, you think you're going to start here and then eventually it's like, oh, no, we need to do this Spin first and this and this and this. And then we come back to here and we can actually do what we originally set out to do. Um, but yeah, yeah. This, this whole topic about exclusives, I guess that also bleeds into collaborations. Um, you know, I'm seeing it not just in the kind of like gotcha genre, but also outside of, of kind of like mobile games. We're seeing it in areas like Magic the Gathering where they're going out and doing collaborations with big kind of like ticket brands, big ticket IPs like Lord of the Rings. And, and they're having phenomenal results. You know, they're having their record years doing these things. We're seeing it in games like Watcher of, Re uh, Watcher of Realms. They're doing exclusives. Yeah, um, exclusives. Raids yeah. are doing collaborations. Um, yeah. So definitely Good feels Dragonair. like it's something. And Dragonair as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dragonair are actually doing one right now. Um, so, so which one are they I, doing? 
Uh, they've got um, another D and D. So they've got another oh, D and D. Yeah, yeah. Elminster so like is it? Yeah, mm-hmm. El- Elminster, Elminster Armor yeah. coming in as a, another kind of like collectible it's a sweet character. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this. This is the thing for anyone who knows these kind of like other IPs or brands. Well, it's huge because you're like I already know them. I've already got some sort of connection with them, and it's one of the reasons why originally we were talking about should we go with a well-known IP. Because there's already this kind of like connection with this this group of collectible uh, heroes. So I think it's a positive mm-hmm. thing. The only thing is it, it creates massive FOMO in mm-hmm. the player base, which I think depends how you how you implement it, but it can be quite unhealthy in yeah. terms of, you know, just, it's a just forcing. Sword. Yeah, you're forcing like spend levels, which probably are uncomfortable for some people, or you're forcing people to completely disengage because it's like well i just can't be involved at that level therefore it's frustrating me that i can't be involved so there's definitely a double-edged sword yet i mean saf give us us, uh the thoughts yeah i think um you know on on the champion design i think one of the things that obviously we we talk about a lot is like skill sets and everything but for us we we always started off and i know you've done a lot of work on this uh simon in your many many hours of art discussions they have to look like top quality and and some of the you're starting to see now with all the videos and stuff that we're producing um on the youtube channel and, and like different snapshots and when he's allowed to the leaks that mr hell hades over there and when i'm not out. <laughs> and when he's not <laughs> don't out him saf come on yeah, man. Saf, know, come we on. all know he's we all That's know he's chief this, leaker so. here right come on now he's like yeah he's <laughs> mr fiction's in, in his in, in the basement it's fine but you know we we started with the philosophy of has to look great it doesn't matter what they do it doesn't matter how like you know powerful they are if they look like you know they've got a bit of a paper towel on them then that just like cheapens the whole thing so we some of our designs now are just so incredible like the one we're looking at them seeing them in the in the sort of in our rendering models and actually we start moving them and and spinning them around it it just really kind of makes it feel a bit real so but you are right like having to design all these things and i think when we've had like internal discussions when we started like oh well we need to figure out like you know base stats and it's like well to know that you're going to need to know this and to this and this and i at times i feel like i'm like, i'm sitting in the guys going like i'm not trying to actually be a, a blocker here but um you need this 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 then right. i can give you here, the answer here's, here's the 70 uh page document you need to, you need to <laughs> yeah. do a quick reading on then i'm going to send you a, a spreadsheet that spreadsheet has four hundred thousand uh, yeah. uh cells so, so go ahead and, and just browse but, that before and then we can know, talk this is the thing it. and i think what's really good if you know for for the average player that's probably watching this podcast now they probably just don't like really realize the complexity that the the battle engine and things are running at and when you actually drill down and look at the detail as to actually what is happening you only start noticing it when you know you start getting very complicated manic mechanics that you don't know what's happening right like the new wrath of lost set in raid is a great example where nobody really knows how it's repeating damage that's when you start getting into okay actually what is it doing whereas right. if something just says attacks one enemy and then places a debuff like from a from our point of view we have to know okay when it attacks the enemy is there like an effect that happens with that enemy in terms of like you know what kind of like do we have an affinity system and then once it's done that how does it place the debuff in what targeting ways there's so much complexity to just like designing simple simplistic things that hopefully if we get it right when you see it in the game you don't even notice it you just play it and you have fun and you see that like amazing animations and you can focus on those things um my my opinion on exclusivity has changed a little bit um like when 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 the monster hunter event which is probably the biggest one for like a lot of our community because they most people have played raid or are playing raid or doing some sort of connections with raid you know my first response to it was like i hate this game i hate everything about it i hate the fact they're creating a hero collector that you can't collect the heroes after a certain point of time. Mm. That is just to me like a bit of a red flag straight away. Um, I ha- my, my opinions have changed a little bit and I've kind of like, as I've gone through the process and understood why they're doing it, it's a massive user acquisition platform and it's so low risk for a lot of IPs. I think in the current climate with, with the way the games industry is at the moment with, you know, many game studios struggling to keep in the green, lots of layoffs, you know, you're seeing huge layoffs across the board it makes sense for these IPs to kind of go, well, the low risk investment is for me to just do a, like a short term project with another game so that they reap the benefits from our fan base and our fan base might go and play that game and we can then get some money from it. It just, it's like a, a very easy win for everyone. And I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing it in Magic the Gathering. You said what you see in like Fortnite, that's pretty much what they've built their game on now is these collaborative events and like seasonal things where there's a theme that's tied to some sort of like pop culture or, or something of that. And I think it's really good for players to keep the game fresh 
So you keep bringing new users into the game that may have not, maybe, you know, they like Monster Hunter. It's a completely different genre. And now they can get their Monster Hunter champion in yeah. Raid and they like it and they get involved in it. But the when you tie it to actually getting a champion, I think that's the fundamental flaw. I think the best suggestion I saw someone suggest was make it cosmetic exclusivity. That's the way to do it. Because yeah, even in things like, so Dragon, maybe like a problem. open out the actual champion acquisition to be more mainstream. Still, still there'll be some sort of event that you run. Or in fact, I say Watcher of Realms is a good game for doing an event specific to something they're doing. They still have at the moment like the champion behind the shard pool, but actually they they run fun events alongside like brand new events uh, and new bosses that type of stuff, new content for these exclusive. Um, game modes or exclusive kind of like bits they're doing it's not a collaboration but it's it's still exclusive champions coming in if they actually put the champion behind the event and then did cosmetics behind the kind of like winning of something else then um or, or behind the paywall stuff then i think actually you've got a really nice nice yeah. like to, to that yeah, it's, to it's that little game. things like the uh the dragon here they have like are, those are, custom are they dice. are they out of the pool really nice are they are they yes. out of that pool in fifth oh, of march so, so, so you, you cannot get it and it's gone it's gone Gone yeah. forever. Like Ninja. When Ninja was in the game, you get him during the promotional period. After that, you can't get Ninja. But they did kind of replace Ninja with Cronum. So they, you know, eventually I would imagine they're going to, over six months' time, find similar like minded champions that kind of do the same thing, but yeah. just maybe not the same way. Uh, it's not really like a one to one replacement. Um, but yeah, I, I just think probably the exclusivity should be tied to potentially non gameplay activities. So that people can feel rewarded, but then don't feel punished by it. Because you know, I you can see what they're kind of doing now. Like Playroom have kind of always been the the market leaders with these kind of like marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. This new, like they've got a new champion, this Unity banner. And you can see what they're trying to do. They're essentially trying to find a balance between having a champion that is essentially exclusive because you can't get him outside of specific timed events, mm -hmm. but that isn't gonna cause the same cause of negativity of, oh well, after you this date, you can't get it. So they've kind of like found a solution with those by saying, well, it's never not available as a principle, but then we might make it available when we choose to make it available, but we'll never tell you when. So this yeah. got that air of exclusivity about it. Um, so I, I don't know. It's always a difficult topic because when you actually extend this kind of concept to life, like it's like going into the supermarket and going, I'm upset because I couldn't get the limited edition like Easter things that were available. Like limited. It, you, but also, you, no, let's say you're talking it, you know? to your mum. She's like, I've just been to the supermarket and I've just got this limited edition thing. You should go and get one. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, that sounds interesting. I might go and get it. So yeah, it, it creates the same sort of thing, doesn't it? It creates the same sort yeah. of, okay, of well, buzz, it's not going to be around forever. Yeah, promo. yeah. So but it, you it might make me go there when I wouldn't go there normally. You know, and that's... You think, yeah. you think about how the, the whole collectible industry works. It's like, oh, this is one of 100. Like, the, you... you you know, like when you, people collect things like um, the swords that we we got to 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 see in uh, the vast collection of uh, things that were in uh, oh, yeah. was yes. in our our friend's house. <laughs> like being able to hold one of the ten props that was Gandalf stuff. Well, so that shouldn't exist. That's unfair. Like I mean, life works in that way where there's always exclusive things that things are going to happen. It's like oh well, I bought it, the actually. It takes me on a bit of a tangent. It's not for this this chat really, but I do want to bring it up. It was in my head earlier. So. We definitely want to have you know cool items which are hard to get and you know named drops that sort of type of stuff. And I was actually wondering, like, would we want to do exclusive items? Not exclusive, but like extremely rare. So if I and I, th I think back to, and again, I harp on this a lot because I used to love it. But World of Warcraft, you'd have these legendary drops, and, and they really were like, no one's got these things. Yeah. Like, if you see yeah. someone with it, you're like, whoa. You're probably the only person I've ever seen with that item. You know, it's it's so rare. Like the Ragnaros uh, uh, yeah. weapon, what was it? Yeah, the, it's the guy Topa Karazan is is um, double blades. Oh, like the super uh, rare drops item. and raids, and yeah, you basically yeah. do that raid God, over so, and over I and over again. I played that game so much, I, I can't remember like this yeah. name. It's so ridiculous. Anyway, yeah. but yes, well, absolutely. But there's a there's a fine line there because uh, we just saw Diablo Four do this. They had super right. uniques. And they would set the drop rate where it's like, literally, if one person on planet Earth gets this, it's impressive. And people yeah. hated it. People but, were like, what is the point of this? But let's say let's say we had 
let's say we had a million players, like we are doing phenomenally well. We've got a million players playing our game. How many people do you think should have had that drop for it to be enough to make sense, but, but not that many so that it feels so exclusive? Like, like one person in each clan? Probably like that kind no, of drop rate. That's, 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 that's like a one in thirty. That's, that's like too, that's a three percent. Yeah, 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 but if it's yeah, like, if, but much. if it's like one in ten thousand, people are going to be like, "Why is this even in the game?" Like, I'm never going to have one my entire life. It has because to be you, like, no, because one in ten thousand, you can still, you can still, you can still get it. It's, it's like if you. So this is, I mean, this is a hot take. I don't know, but like, if you're grinding for a specific item, right? What, what I, I keep forgetting what this horse is called uh, for WoW, right? The the horse in in the Scarlet Monastery, you had to go a billion times to go get it. Uh, it, the dread you guys know what I'm talking or, about? Yeah, it's, it's like the, or in, oh, I don't know the actual name. Yeah, okay. Like that. Anyway, I, I know, I know what you mean. Invincible, anyway. maybe it was what it was called. Anyway, but but there, there was a mount, right? And you don't have to go and grind that, right? You don't. Ha- you can go and, and do a, a million other things in the game, but if you you want to be that person that's that's that that went in that went hard on this, and you want to ha- be the one in, you know one in a quarter million or whatever the, uh, whatever the number is that we would end up with, then that's, that should be exciting for you to be able to do that. And I think that that's fair for it to exist. Like, like, yeah, but you're making it sound like a guaranteed. You're making it sound like if you commit to the grind, you're guaranteed to get it. That's a completely different thing. Well, no, but the the Diablo level is too much, right? Hold hold on a second, because the the mount is a, that's basically a cosmetic, right? So you're not, you're not gaining power. You're not, you're not going to go into the next raid stronger. Mm. Whereas, a lot of the the kind of really exclusive drops, certainly in WoW, were that was power. When you got them and you were doing that that content, it was as good as you were going to get. Now, when they then released another patch, it was just it's a useless item. It's a level sixty. <laughs> yeah, you're now yeah. level seventy. You can whip them out, and you're like, no one else has got these, but you, okay. they're no longer usable, so they may as well be cosmetic. But at the moment that you got them, they were a power surge for your account. So you kind of got two two elements there. So we've got this. Yeah, we want really exclusive stuff, but it's cosmetic. So therefore, it's it's not boosting my account. It's just super rare. Or then you've got this other thing where it's like, no, I am just stronger because I've got this very rare item and I, I was lucky to get mm-hmm. it or I ground, you know, I did a load of grinding or whatever. But, you know, it's there's two elements there. I actually, personally, I love that. Yeah, 100%. I love I'm, it. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. Even I, if I don't, don't know what you guys stuff, think. I'd, I'd yeah. love to have the stuff as well, well but even Seth, if I don't have the stuff, I like it. You, yeah. you might agree or disagree with me, but the best I've ever seen it done personally is um, primals in Diablo three. It was, it was extremely cool when you got a primal in relation to your build and you were sending it on discord and you were showing your friends. I just got this primal Yang's recurve. Are you kidding me? Look at this. It was super rare, but it was realistic. Like what, what, one or two people in your rates? clan are going to have something like that happen. So, where it's like, dude, look at this. I think the problem with Diablo 4's uber unique system is one, they made it too rare to get. Like they, they was like obscenely rare. Whereas at least in in raiding, like you probably have like a, you complete the final boss, you do it once a week, you've got like maybe a ten percent chance. Right, it's it's more than often than likely at least one person in the top fifty are going to have it in a reasonable in that like raid window. Whereas in literally in Diablo 4, they made it so rare that. The devs were like saying, "Oh, you probably will never get it." Like, so no, no one's was, ever going to get this. So it's don't even worry about it. Um, and the other thing as well, like, like with Diablo Four, I'm pretty sure it didn't perfect roll those Ubi uniques either. So, like, you could get like you could finally get that Ubi unique, and then it would like not perfect roll. So, I think anything like of an ex- extremely rare exclusivity. When I've played Lord of the Rings online in the past, there used to be stuff in um, the first raid that they did, the Rift of Nurse Gashu, I think it was. Uh, they had like very special rare drops which is like a, an eyelash and then there was a special cloak very very rare an eyelash but it was like an eyelash it was like a pocket item it's like an eyelash thing i don't really know what it's called it's just like they had like a they had, I mean, they had like a, a pretty, cloak pretty crappy it was amazing drop, <laughs> <laughs> wow i mean it was powerful it was basically like you were saying it was like you put okay. it on your item and it was like it would give you like 20 like of every single it? stats like, that needs like, to be like is... a potion ingredient or something yes. like yeah. amazing um the witch's but, brew they always used to have it so that it was like super rare so you had that like exclusive feeling but when it rolled it was rolling perfect and that's the primal right. aspect you i think you were kind of mentioning so i think if we did it primal does it roll have to perfect, perfect roll. right yes yeah, yeah. so Prim- well you, primal like, will roll the highest of the stat range if like if it rolls like, the stat yeah. range is, is if it rolls 1000 to 1500 attack it rolls 1500 attack yeah yeah so i think these uber unique rare items that we were talking about as, as a concept needs to be very fixed in nature like 
every single version of it is the same version. There's no variability in it because it's such a rare drop that if you get it, it gives you what it's, it's designed for a very specific purpose and it's yeah. very good at what it does. And that's where it works. If you actually end up creating pieces where it's like, ah, actually you can get like seven different substats and like four different things and then it might not roll very well. Right. Then, it, then that whole well, it can't be that rare. Yeah. Just so so let's good. take the, let's take this through just as an example. So let's say you could find Gandalf's staff in our game. You can't, but let's say you could, right? You could find it normally. It's a drop in a, a dungeon or whatever. It's, it's, it's a possible drop in an event, and it had this kind of range from I don't know a thousand to fifteen hundred of, of power. So if we had an uber rare version of that, so it's the same item, but it drops. Uh, and, and maybe it's just got slightly different text an terminology. Like, like an example. An exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it absolutely rolls 1500 and it's just got like perfect stats. Do we think that's a positive thing? Then let, let's say, and, and going back to like the numbers thing. So let's say it was a, a one in, I don't know, 10,000. 10, I would say. Well, so but one, in 10, 000, on one in 10,000 pulls or one in 10,000 of the Gandalf staff? One, well, no, I'm thinking like one in, so let's say we had a million players, one in 10,000 people. Players are going to get one. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah maybe. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers. but One yeah. in 10,000 feels feels like... Still too many? So you, you got to think about it, that as a percentage. So, you know, one in 10,000 of, of... One in 10,000 is thousand about a million, right? Yeah. 10,000 10, in a million is the number I was doing. So... Oh, 10,000 in a million. Okay, yeah. well, so then, then that... It, it probably is better to configure it based on poll type, right? So, for example, if I run, like, a dungeon... 200,000 times, then, you know, I should get it by then, right? That kind of exclusivity yeah. thing where yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. if I run no. something enough, like because that's where basically, um, if you think about it, the raid system came in. As long as I keep doing the raid every single week all the time, then I'm saving up my DKP points because I don't care about yeah. anything else. And then yeah. at the moment it drops, I'm like, no, 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 my DKP points, you I'm guys ready. can mine. get yeah, yeah, yeah. It is mine. I've grabbed And you, and you bought something last week and you were like, ah, oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want that faith. stupid cloak anyway. God, yeah, it's only because no one else took it. And I was like, well, it's an upgrade. I might use it in my resist set. Like, uh. Yeah, and then, yeah. You're, so and then you're like one point below. Remember, oh, God, DKP. But, but the concept <laughs> is... <laughs> The concept is not on like how many people can get it, but how many times I do that content. So if I'm committed to doing it, then we set like, you know, if we want the rarity to be quite high of it, then obviously you just have to do it like, I don't know, 200,000 times well, yeah, or whatever. Uh, whatever we exactly, because then everyone can get it. And I think that that's, that's, maybe the, that's maybe the point. Everyone can get it. If you want to focus on on this thing, like, so like an example of the other, other direction of this is like for, for PvP, um, in, in, in WoW, early PVP, you know, you could get to a uh, high warlord or grand marshal and there was only one person per server, per cycle that could get it. Right. And that I think would feel bad in a system like this, where it's like, oh, well, only, only some t small percentage of the population are, are going to get it because of within some criteria, especially if that's a big power thing, um, you know, I'm not saying that we won't give cool rewards for PvP, but but I think that that's that's one of the things we have to be we have to pay attention to. But yeah, but like the on the other side, if it's like if it's like you're saying, like if I just if I go and I grind, you know, molten core enough, eventually, I'm gonna get it. You'll right? get it. If, I, if, if I'm willing to to spend that time, I'll get but it. I think that's the thing with Diablo Four. Most people that I know, like I would imagine, if you did a poll of all the Diablo Four players that still play the game, uh, which probably went last epoch out at the moment, it's not very much at the moment. Um, <laughs> Pretty much like 70%, if not higher, probably play it as a seasonal model. They don't really play it from like the eternal realm. I would imagine the majority yeah. of people play it on seasonal. So when you put that into context, I think, well, I got three months to grind this uber unique that one in a million people in the world can get. You're kind of like, I'm not going to then, it, then it's a problem, right? Because yeah. you actually kind of like making it the feel impossible because you, you've you've time limited the grind. Because then you, at next reset, it all starts again. You've got to start the grind again. And that's where it can feel hopeless. Whereas... You know, we're not doing a concept like Dragon has got a reset. We're not doing that concept because I think it it, it has its merits, but it has its problems. Um, and I think that way then you can set up this kind of like rare item without it feeling punishing for a player because as long as the reality is that it exists, which to be honest with Diablo 4, we were starting to wonder even if you could get them, it was that rare. Um, literally like one person had a screenshot from like China or something saying, I've got my grandfather. And I was like, no, 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 this is AI. There's no way this is true. This is fake. This is, 
like prove it. We want to see the screenshot yeah. in the game. We want the game yeah. logs. We want the developer to, because <laughs> it was that rare. It was crazy. Like we're talking, I think, didn't it take them like two months from the game launch for anyone to get any Uber unique? It was so stupid. And wow. I think that's the that's the difference with Diablo 4 because they've made it a seasonal concept. The grind is not worth it. But so there's funny that you say that it. because to, to kind of tie us back to the champion stuff, seasonal type concept or or this kind of like unique that cuts off at a certain time is very similar to an exclusive, exclusive champion that cuts off at a certain time, which just now we were saying, well, that, that kind of makes some sense. So, um, well, yeah, so, 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 and I think yeah. maybe that's, maybe the issue is that if you continue to play, so in a seasonal model, like it, it rotates and it's like, well, you're not going to be playing with those players again anymore. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's, that was, this was like a little snippet of time. This isn't your like long-term account. Well, no, right? But imagine if the seasonal, works in a different way because the seasonal concept that we're not going to do is certainly the Dragonair every three months, everyone's accounts set back to zero. We're all starting from scratch. But it's possible that we might say this is the end of this season for PvP mm -hmm. and, and we have like a reset of PvP. For, it won't mm -hmm. be like a PvE reset, I don't think, but there, there might be PvP resets where it's like, okay, these were the winners. Okay, yeah. now we're starting resets, again. Rebuilds. And, you know, you what know, about if, if the winner or the, the top 10, top 20 or whatever got in a, either a cosmetic um, exclusive or an item exclusive, but you'd have to be careful with like, the item. Like, it and really and this is, count. I think, to your point, like a cosmetic is a no-brainer, no problem. That's That should be 100%. We will always pull that lever. That is like a really cool thing because you want to be able to show off. Yeah. If it's a weapon and you can never get it again, there is literally no way to get it again. I don't know how I feel about that. Like I, I'd, have to, I'd have to kind of think long and hard about that because... Yeah, I mean, it, it, part of it might be like how much of a difference it actually makes, right? Is it going to make my my champion so overpowered that how, no how much of a difference it makes and thing. where is another pro yeah. is another thing? Like, yeah. So if it was like I've won, I, I won PvP, which means you probably should win something for PvP generally, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but actually, PvP is where you don't really want people to have these exclusive overpowered things, right? Yeah, it's so a <laughs> PvE. The rich get like, richer, right? You know they what? just keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to slightly be. Your, your dungeon run slightly enhanced is very different from I'm playing you and you've got one up on me and I, I actually have got no yeah. way to bridge that gap. Yeah. That's that's very different. I think based off that, so what you're suggesting, which is take the Dragon Board leaderboard, uh, Dragon Air leaderboards, but not the seasonal reset. And I actually think that's quite a good idea because like if you finish top 300 in Dragon Air, you get a horse that you can run around the world with. It doesn't physically change the way you play the game, but people are like, I want to be top, top 300. It's like, I want that horse. Like I yeah. need yeah. that horse. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing you can also do is tie resource generation or resources themselves to those positioning. So for example, if you finish top 50 in Dragonair, then you get a better end of a start of season summoning event mm. because you finished better last season. Now, it does kind of create a bit of a lag where if I'm a casual player, I'm always behind the people and all the casual player, but you have that in every every angle of life. Like if someone works an extra five hours in you, then they're going to do better than you. So that's just life. I'm sorry. There's not much I can really do about that. Um, <laughs> but I can't help you there. I actually think if you make the only thing that should 100%, I think that is just a good idea that doesn't really hurt anyone is cosmetics. That's the only one that I would say suggest is time limited exclusive. You see that in MMOs, right? When end of season of a, of a PVP zone, you get like a Later, special cloak whatever. or a special cosmetic yeah. gear. It's just that's. I, I do fine. like the idea though of of the the perfect Gandalf staff being able to drop. I do like it. Like imagine yeah, if you don't get make it. it time limited. That's yeah, the key. Yeah, yeah. I think. Like, ongoing. But imagine if you yeah. get it one of these five or ten or whatever, like proper exclusive items or one that someone in your clan so gets sick. it or whatever yeah. or, or even if you're in the discord group and you're like guys have you seen what whoever's got you know sham's just 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 grabbed gandalf's you know pristine stuff or whatever and, and you just be like no way yeah. like let's show it to me like <laughs> you know, what's oh man all i've got is this old dusty one with mm -hmm. like half the stats uh, why don't we just go uh, why don't we just go full like Willy Wonka and have like five of a certain item and the five people that get it they get to come to Fateless Studios and and <laughs> yeah man that would actually be awesome. get their name on a statue yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not gonna lie that that actually like like that, be super joking, but that, that would be a sweet yeah. that'd be a sweet event I'm not gonna lie that would be pretty cool actually yeah I mean depending, depending have, on like, how those um, things are, are are one right I think like so I think so let, let's say we ran with that idea for just a second right um because because what that what that's saying is like okay and this is core to the discussion in a lot of ways 
is that we want players to feel like they have a chance, whether that's like a, a short-term chance or a long-term chance, but there is a chance to be getting it. And then it doesn't just like float away. And like, and that, uh, you know, that, that FOMO doesn't become like, okay, well now I'm going to make some really irrational kind of unhealthy decisions, you know, for me, that's, I think the, the kind of, so like for this, for this golden ticket thing that you're talking about, like, I think what could be cool is like, well, well we have like, we, you know, we've talked about having a normalized PVP. We won't talk about the specifics here, but we've talked about having like a normalized PVP before. So like that feels like something that, yeah, hey, if you're if you're willing to grind, you're willing to play and you're really, you know, to to learn what, you're, what the best strategies are and to do, then then, yeah, you, you have a shot at this and that can be exclusive. It can be time gated. That feels fine to me because it's like it's like it's like an event. It's it's not going to it's not something that's going to now change your account and make it so that next normalized pvp season i just win because i'm just better than you and i have all the i have all the, the perks i just get to do something cool i get to or i get to my character gets to look cooler or i get a cooler portrait or whatever like those things feel fun and exciting and, and yeah, it's why we play um, these games you know blizzard did a did an event the top or first thousand people to get you know get level 100 or whatever they get their name on a statue and oh, it was cool yeah it was super cool like i went and got my picture yeah. taken next to like my name on the statue and stuff and it's like it's like 15 feet tall. It was a super cool event. Yeah. So I think if you have like an exclusive event, like, hey, rewarding, if you want to put in the effort, you can be on this or be a part of this. I think that's super cool. Yeah. Did, yeah. Didn't they get like a congratulations message from Megan Fox as well? Uh, um, no, that was when they died in hardcore. <laughs> oh, was it? So, oh. So, so yeah, you had to, you, the, the competition was get to 100 in hardcore. And the first, I think, a thousand people that did it got their name on a statue. So obviously it was race to race to 100. But obviously yeah. in hardcore, if you die, you have to start again and they basically had it so like if someone died in hardcore they'd send the clip to where megan fox would read like some sort of like <laughs> i don't know it's you okay got slayed, you worked hard now you yeah. will slay me or something i she was like, like, she was like, oh, up like Lilith or something. <laughs> they had she people, was in like a graveyard yeah they had people like, like loading into a dungeon and it like glitched and killed them it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was they like streamer like, um, clips of just crazy deaths like what i just wait, loaded is, your, is your character still alive then no it's no. gone no, it's gone. Uh, how, gone. Did, how did you die? How did how did uh, the chosen one perish? Uh, uh, a legit one. Uh, I, I, it was I, a legit death. Yeah, I can't, oh, I can't no. blame anything. There's no there's no excuses for me. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I could never play hardcore because my um, so ego rough. gets the better of me. I'm like, I definitely can do this thing. I'm only ten levels below it. I, I, I'm sure I can get away with this. It's fine. And, and then you're okay. and then you're like desperately death, rushing death, away from them. Death, and they're like, takes yeah, you like, like two hours to kill one mob. I'm just like, maybe I shouldn't because I'm impatient. So like, I want to get to world tier four. I want to get there. You know, I'm ready. I was like, I'm only twenty levels behind. It's fine. It's not a problem. I can do this. Just take it slow. Twenty hours later. <laughs> did get there but like four I died. Mobs and I've like, lost this is why I can't play. everyone's like you should play hardcore I'm like I'm not a hardcore player it's a bad idea um but just going back on the exclusive items uh you were talking about um I, I'm, I'm playing Dragon Air a lot at the moment because it's the end of season it's very stressful but they have the concept of hero exclusive items so huh. it's very difficult to get in their system because you have to actually get a duplicate of that legendary to be able to summon it so this is very like FOMO tight money but the concept is they've designed specific items in a perfect environment that empowers the the specific legendary it works for. So it might be like, take um take their version of a Zeus. I like to call him Zeus Pacunte. He basically has like this passive that gives him bonus damage. And then they give him an item that basically makes that passive bonus damage do like 100% more damage. So it's oh, like, wow, wow. When you oh, get sorry, in with the better. item, now it's really cool. And you see it all the time. Everyone's talking about, I want to get that exclusive item. They're chasing that exclusive item. They really want it. But, but those get wiped, fun. right? Or do they or do they stick no, around? No, you keep them. You keep the they they reset the artifact back to level one, but you keep the artifact. But you so, keep the artifact. Okay. Yeah, because you can only get them once. So you you, you basically That'd be basically pretty brutal if you're like, oh, like that. Cool, I finally got it. And it's Very like hard. and then like you know, tick tock, tick tock, and then just like the accounts just wiped. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the gear really that, that that they wipe more than anything and reset you back and then change the element matchups and, and basically like reset the game progress. So you actually have something to chase um a little bit. But um but yeah, they, they, they works really well because you can see that the player excitement about getting that like perfect environment when they get like the the legendary with their exclusive item and now the power is unlocked and they can just go, wow, look at my champion, he's just destroying the world. It feels so good. Um, but you've got to be careful about that because then the other angle that they've created is they've made them so powerful oh, that you could literally yeah. put them in everything and it defeats game balance. So going back to what we were talking about in skill sets and how we design heroes, it's like you can only give so much power to certain levels before yeah. you have to then kind of go and do, okay, we need to look at the whole picture because it's too much. 
you know, and I think in like Dragonair, for example, they thought it was a good idea to basically, they have like a psychic core bonus that gives you bonuses. And then if you inspire the champion, they get like 50% more of that bonus. So it's like, okay, so if I get a duplicate, my champion now just is like a thousand percent more strong. Just it's, better, way better. There's no game balance to it because it means that anything else you put into it now is, is that that one hero, regardless of whether it makes sense strategically, is too powerful. So yeah, it, it, it's, actually, it's challenging. It's just jogged my, my memory as well about some comments which are in our Discord. By the way, if you're not already, come and join the Discord. Um, there's a lot of people that have mentioned, or a few people actually, that have mentioned, we hope that commons, uncommons, rares have got a place in the game and they've got skills that make some sense so that you can actually be used in different content. And you know, we hope that some people actually want the common to be upgradable to uncommon, then upgradable to rare and, and kind of go with that system. Um, I don't think that's what we're going to do, but yeah. I definitely like the idea of at least some of the uncommons having a cool ability or these kind of like cool synergies with someone else even if they won't be as strong as a legendary. Obviously, we always want for the higher tier to be the strongest champion so that you feel you feel like it means something when you pull one of those kind of like right. big champions. But I don't, I don't know don't what you guys think, but I definitely think the game should be beatable in terms of like PvE content with, you know, majority epics in your team. And, 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 and rares should have an impact, um, certainly at the lower levels of, of tier of gameplay. And, as you progress, maybe you need more epics with your group. Um, yeah. No, I, what's your I, I, thoughts I, on this? There's this kind of whole kind of, because some people say, don't even put commons or uncommons in the game. Why are you doing that? Like, so um, yeah. What, what's your thoughts? I mean, I, I agree. I think, I think so. And, and we're already starting to do this. Like we, I can't, I can't speak about the specific champion uh, that uh, in the common tier, but there is a common tier character. That oh, I is, know who you're talking about. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I can't people say are gonna it, love I can't this spoil. common champion. Uh, it's common champion. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit. She is, uh, <laughs> is, is pretty, is pretty awesome and definitely will have a place, maybe even multiple places in the game. And I think that, but like at the core of the way, I think we're going to design all the characters is that, yeah. And I agree with them. hundred percent of the characters should feel like they have a place in the game and, and they should be like, if you build them well, if you build them with the right, you know, weapons and artifacts and, and, and gear and stuff like that. They should fit into a, a team. Now they might not always be the best for that part, you know, for, for, for that team, right? That might be a better rare or a legendary or whatever. And I think that's important that we do that. Otherwise, you would just pull some commons yeah, and then you would start playing. That the would game actually be win. boring the other way, right? It'd be like, well, right. just beat everything with a team of commons. That's that's not in the nature of this style of game. But when we you design know. a character, they have to they have like that's the core of what we're that's why we took this, you know, at the beginning of the discussion, we had to do all this other design work to even yeah come back to abilities and passives because we were like, crap, how do we even, how do we try to even evaluate this if we don't know what, yeah. how do we find the solution to a problem we don't know? I guess that's yeah. the best way to put it. You know what I mean? And you, you can't really have common champions being better than a, a legendary champion. Right? As much <laughs> no. as like, as much as Cold Heart is great. Except for this one exception and you guys will laugh when you, when you find it. <laughs> right. But I'm much more aligned towards making content so it's a, it's a it's a people are like hate me for this like the Sintranus model but not as extreme mm. where it's almost like you make content that is more interesting based on like using them so it, it that's what yeah. the kind of concept of of Sintranus is meant to do and in some states it's, it's sort of in some aspects it works because i'm using champions i was like oh i didn't realize this champion was that good like killing never the used this champion. Yeah. didn't realize how amazing he was for turn to control and it you kind of like broadens your idea the downside is you need a bigger roster but the positives are you you make sure that every champion has a place in the game. You just don't go as extreme of going like trying to make it so restricted that it's just impossible. And that's where they kind of lost the plot a little bit. Um, I think in other games it, plays, it, it makes it so it feels fun to to pull yeah. like late in the game. This is this is something I think that all hero collectors really struggle with. Right. Early in the game, you go in, you got like one champion. You start pulling and you're like, whoa, who is this Everything new champion? Useful. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah, is great. To some degree. It feels great. And it feels great for, for you know, a month, two months, or however long, you know, that feels good. However good their dupe system is can extend that, right? But but yeah, then there's a point where you're just like, well, I have I have all of the tools I need. I don't really care about this level or worse. And that kind of feels bad. And we have some really cool solutions. We can't, again, I can't really spoil this this one, yeah. but we have some really cool solutions for um for that, for the dupe system. 
So, but yeah, it, it's just, I think that's, that's, it's crucial to make it. So when you're, you're excited to pull, not maybe not every single champion, but you're excited or at least have a vision in your head. Oh, that, that character, you know, they've got a bunch of poisons. That would be really cool in this area because I really need poisons. You know what I mean? But that's isn't that cool. true with everything? Like, you know, you start playing a new RPG, Diablo 4 or whatever, and then three months into it, you're like, oh, this is just a boring grind. I mean, you start a new Minecraft server with your friends. Oh, it's super exciting. We're building stuff. Eventually, three months in, everybody gets bored. Yeah. It's a grind. Like, I just feel like it's really hard to avoid that. I, I yeah, but, 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 but the question is, why Why do those games have that that longe- Like, you just mentioned Minecraft and, and Diablo. Why do people keep keep coming back to them? Mostly it's because of content. If content drops, new yeah. stuff comes in, they reset, new challenges. You know. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I said I think the this the path to success for making every champion relevant is creating compelling strategic reasons why you would use that champion over the legendary champions. Or you make it so like, you know, some of the things that I've had when we've when we talked about running different tournaments and things is instead of making it a like a, a punishment make it a reward. So like, for yeah. example, bonus. Uh, if, you do that. if we ever tried to do an arena tournament, everyone would be like, oh, what's the point? Everyone's just going to pick Taras. When we were like, well, okay, well, you can pick Taras if you want. I'm not going to punish your roster, which is what Cintranos does. It punishes you because you can't use your roster. Mm-hmm. But actually what they should do is you should do stuff like, well, if you happen to use a rare champion, you get double the amount of points. Or mm-hmm. if you, you know, Dragon A do this very well because they kind of have like this model where it's like, well, this boss takes 200% more damage from fire. So then you have to build a fire team and eventually you start running out of like the legendaries and you go, okay, well, actually I'll use this rare because this rare is quite good. You create relevancy for all your heroes then because the content makes it relevant. Whereas I think every game has that problem because every game you'll progress, right? You start off with wanting to use any champion because you're just bare bones in. What I have. Yeah. You're always going to progress when you, whether you're doing it via champions, whether it's gear design, you know, that four star gear that I had four years ago would have been amazing. I sell it within like the first three weeks now because I'm up to five star. I don't really care about the rest. So you always need a level of progression. There's not really much you can do about that because otherwise the game feels like it's just giving you everything you don't want if you don't have that progression. Um, but yeah, I, I for me, it's always about make the content, make the champion strategically relevant. Yeah. Don't make, try not to make the champions more powerful so that they make them relevant, which is what we see as the games develop and they get like, you know, they start adding more and more powerful things. And then the, then the others just cannot compete because there's no refactoring. You haven't gone backwards and gone two years ago, we released this hero. It's now out of date. It needs yeah. to be updated. And then you have a whole, that league have this problem, League of Legends. You know, mm-hmm. they've, they've stopped making new units because they realize they've got so many that they actually need to go back and make some of the other ones some more the relevant ones. for the, the 2024. So they've focused more on redevelopment and visual upgrades and like um gameplay updates to their existing led you know legends or whatever they call them in that game rather than just pumping out new heroes all the time which is you know it's it's a challenge because you know we all we're always thinking like well how are we going to design champions six months after launch as well so it's never a it's never a one and done problem and you always got to try and keep in mind the game balance try and keep in mind that these you know there's there's also like there's got to be a reason to go and get those champions right there's no point making a legendary champion as good as a rare because it's like well i've got the rare why do i need the legendary champion right it's, it's yeah, not it's, an easy solution it's well one, one of the things i think that to kind of like point out is that it, it it's it's far more interesting in my mind to have a little like a you know there's just gonna be power creep o- over time that just kind of happens right but if you if instead of being forced into power creep because you're like, well, people are bored. So they, and, and they want, they want new champions and those new champions have to be better. If you just add new challenges that are interesting and outside of the general pool of what's, of what's easy to do with, you know, the, the, the established meta, then you can introduce new champions that are, that are solutions to those problems. And that becomes a really interesting cycle, like a, a far yeah. more interesting cycle than, than just going like, well, this guy's got to have 50 more attack because everyone else has 1700, whatever the number is, you know, uh, base attack like so that that's more i think the way that the approach that we're taking is like exactly. have really cool interesting problems that need to be solved and then give you some tools and let you figure out how to solve them you know but also like making new content pieces that suddenly makes a particular champion quite powerful mm-hmm. because of their well, unique combinations yeah. Yeah. like we we always look at amius now and we're going oh heal reduction is very important so people are using Manaya this rotation because she has a heal reduction with lots of healing. Her unique set of skills in most places are not very good, but here, very good. So therefore, her using value Manaya? skyrockets. 
People are using Minaya. Yeah. Wow, that's a, <laughs> it's happened. The yeah. video is ready. She is Simon better. on a video on this. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers, well, the right? Thing yeah. is, she's got heal reduction with healing, and it's like that's what you want for that particular encounter. If you put that in any other encounter in raid or in other, it's not as important. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she's a terrible champion because she does it very well. So it's making the content make the champion good. And I think we, if we fo if we do that right, then we should never have a problem with ah, uh, you've got like. 300 champions or 300 heroes and 200 of them are useless because I only want the one, right? Which is where Raiders got to a little bit right now. And, and many games can get to where it's almost like they've created such a power creep and a power curve that there's one legendary or one hero, even thinking all the way back to my days playing Awakened Chaos Era when it was just like that one poisoner that made every dungeon easy. And without him, yeah. it was like a three minute tax on your encounter, yeah. uh, on, on your and, like entire and game actually, space. That, that comes back to like right from the top, we were talking about having to make bosses almost like the first priority because once you've got 30 bosses or whatever we need then then you need to design champion kits and it might be that okay well a rare probably only really should thrive in one of these scenarios yeah uh, or maybe like a starter would, would would be in a few more but let's say it's one uh, an epic maybe thrives in like five uh you know and a legendary maybe thrives in five to ten like so it, de it depends what they need to like you said, uh, Shan, what, what problem they need to solve with the bosses? It's kind of like how we need to build kits so that you know, there's always a purpose. Even if it's a common, it might be that they're they're a poor option, but they do a, a job in this area. Yeah. And then hopefully you would get yeah. the epic upgrade or the, and then you or upgrade, the, and it feels exciting to get that upgrade because then you're yeah. like, oh, okay, I built this champion, it's working, but now I can you know shave a bunch of time off my run. I can be more efficient. I can whatever I can like that that. That's what we're looking for. Like those those moments are are what that's why we play these games, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to it's to kind of have that excitement. Oh, I pulled a new champion. I get this new toy to play with. This new key is maybe a better analogy, right? It's this new key that has, you know, it's got the different ridges and it fits a bunch of doors. And maybe it and and maybe it kind of fits in some doors, but it doesn't fully unlock it. And you need, you know, other pieces from other characters. It's I don't know, but like I I I'm glad that that we're kind of all on the same page and, and that we're we're so you know the 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 vision for how we design these is pretty like it's nice to be aligned because if it's just like one or two people that are like, okay guys, this is how you have to do it, and everyone's like, Well, I don't understand. What don't we just do a curve and we make things harder? <laughs> and no, it, it's it's nice to it's nice to feel like we have we have a, a direction and there's no real hot take on on how this should be designed, but there is maybe a hot take before we we uh, we get out uh get out of here on 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 uh, exclusive champions so maybe everyone can kind of give their give their opinions uh and then we can we can we can leave it at that and see what you guys think and then you guys should let us know what you guys think uh, in, the, in the comments so maybe i'll just uh, pass it over to brad brad what do you, what's your thoughts on exclusive uh characters i think it's just inevitable because uh it makes sense from so many different angles that you're gonna see it it, it, it does multiple things. It reaches new people that wouldn't have otherwise heard of you. Like when Raid did Ronda Rousey, like, you know, you, you typically would think like people that are fans of like fighting and MMA, they're, they're probably not super into Raid Shadow Legends naturally, but they see Ronda Rousey. Wait, what is this? What, what is this Raid Shadow Legends? They check it out. So you reach a new, uh, a new fan base and, and then making it exclusive gives people like that, uh, that urgency, which we see in every business, every single thing does this. Like, Hey, shop here in the next 24 hours and you, you get a 30% discount. I mean, every when you go to a new website to order something, there's always like enter this promo code within the next 15 minutes and you get like, there's always that happening. So I just think it's inevitable and hopefully we can pull it off in a way where it it doesn't alienate players and, it, and it's more fun. A hot take. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, do, what do you think, Seth? I guess for, like, so, so like, like, like uh, just round up your, your ideas on that. What do you think? Well, if I can get Gandalf in our game, I'm I'm all for it. Tell you what, if I get Frodo as well and the One Ring, then I agree with everything exclusive. You can like <laughs> you're like you I, take, I don't care. You can take no my annual salary. Um, I is want... Frodo not just like Frodo for me feels a bit like Harry Potter, like basically the useless guy, but he's <laughs> he surrounded by such cool people Mordor. that he gets through it. He's the it's everyone. Like, this shouldn't he's be called Harry Potter. Character. This should be called Hermione Useless, Granger. Useless. He's the one with the fortitude to be able to handle the burden well, of the ring. Come on, to be now. honest, Samwise Gamgee is the is the hero. Of the Samwise, thing. come on, Samwise, Samwise is the hero. hero. Samwise the hero of the thing. We know this, um, obviously. Uh, but jokes aside, um, yeah, I think for me, exclusivity sits on a cosmetic tier for time limited 
sensitivity. I, I think that makes perfect sense that maybe you get like an emblem for completing season one. Well, if you know if someone joins at season three, it's like, oh, how did you get that? It's like, well, I was I was one of the founders. I was around. It gives you notoriety. It gives you f- the feeling of like, you know, I've, I'm, I feel good because I got this. And it doesn't punish your gameplay. Anything that is like gameplay specific when it comes to exclusive champions, I get a bit like it's a hero collector game. If I can't collect the hero, it's just tragic. It's just mm-hmm. fundamentally you've got a red flag before you begin. I love the concept of having like this unit, this item to chase that gives me power. That's really cool. Just don't time limit it. Just make it so it's hard to get. Fine. The more I play, brilliant. Or maybe you make it so it's like, if you complete, like Dragon is very well. If you complete all the stages, congrats, you get this unique item. Yeah. But if you don't get all the stages, the this quest, rotation, yeah. you've missed out on that item. Well, so, that's fine. You should commit to that. So yeah. I would like to ask you, um, what if what if Raid did Ninja's exclusive during this uh, login opportunity where you can get him for free? After that, you can still pull him, but it's half the odds of a normal legendary. What if they did something like that? Like so, so he, he's just he's, rarer in the pool. He's still exclusive, and you can still get him, but it's going to be tough. Well, I don't I don't think you do that. I think he's just basically creating like a. He's not exclusive anymore, then, is he? He's just like a champion you get for free. Like they've done That's that what before, I'm wondering. Right? I'm wondering if, if there's a middle ground to create um, that urgency but then i think you give him an exclusive skin that's what you would do like if you get if you get the champion for free and then you can get the skin during that promotional window the skin is free the skin is exclusive but the champion then isn't that's that's how i would approach it i just don't think it's a good idea in my opinion because i think it just creates so much negativity amongst people even if it's not even if if it's baseless like i've heard some people go i've played this game for like 4 years i deserve to get archer from the game my loyalty deserves the right like it's that's silly i've seen people but it, it drives the worst out of like the whole free to play mentality where it's almost like there's an obligation that the game should give me what i want even if i'm not willing to spend money on it because it's exclusive and if i don't get it i can never get it and i just think it drives the worst mentality when you make it based on actual things that matter in the game because although cosmetic matters is i'm not devaluing cosmetics it doesn't affect how you beat the game mm-hmm. but a lot of people will play the game because of how it looks let's face it league of legends built their entire business on selling skins yes. so yeah. and we've always wondered why this doesn't work in raid and like it should do because we care more about the visuals sometimes than what the champions actually do Some games cool. do they'll, they'll make a skin yeah. give you five percent damage or something you know there is, yeah, I don't, I hate yeah. I'm, Which is actually super bit, irritating, bit, 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 bit. by the way. Watch Realms like does that. And, and yeah. like, I actually don't like the current, the Silas skin, for example. No. But I'm forced to put it on because I'm just like, okay, well, because but my character is worse. Power, you're tying power to something that doesn't actually mean anything, which I think is the bad part about it. It's not that you get the power, it's the fact that the, the, the acquisition of power is like, oh, I bought a skin. I'm like, no, no, no. The champion should have the power. The gear that you farm should have the power. The strategy you employ should have the power. Not some random skin giving you five oh, well, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great yeah. Viva dirt on this. If you guys want to watch it, it's it's it's, it's, it's very hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, to sum up my points on the exclusivity, I think having like rare items is like really cool for me. I don't think there's any mobile games in the that I know of that give you like this kind of like hunt the rare item. They'll give you just items, or they'll give you like a paid item. But they don't have this thing where it's like, oh, no, actually, there's like a one percent chance you get like an Uber version of this. Obviously, ARPGs are renowned for it, and I think it's really cool to merge the two together. Um, but I just don't like having time limited champions that you can't get again because I just feel like it goes against the whole point of a hero collector. If I can't collect the hero, even if it might take me five years, I don't like that. Simon, what do you think? Yeah, well, I'm probably somewhere in between the two, really, because I think from a business point of view, the collaboration with these these companies is great. It means that you bring a lot of players into your game. And actually, I, I think the majority of players probably play the game for less than six months anyway. So we're we're the anomalies in terms of you know, four year plus players uh, for for a mobile game. So having these kind of collaborations that come by maybe every six months or a year or whatever to bring a bunch of fresh faces to the game and you know to enjoy the game, I think is good. And with that, you generally need to have a reason for them to come in. Generally, that's going to be in a hero collector, a hero, or you know some some friendly faces that you know from that from that kind of collaboration. And normally contractually. You can't continue to to offer that champion out after the event, so that's that's a problem. That's why someone like a ninja can't just be re given out at half the rates or whatever. It's just because contractually you're not allowed to. So it's, it's either you do it or you don't do it. I think it's it's healthier for the game in terms of player base to do it. Um, but I think when the events are going on, it should be 
a more uh, more open way to to obtain the champions, which isn't just cash. Uh, is is my view? Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, but I like the idea of it, and and I, I, the more we talked about it, I know it wasn't this topic, but I do like the idea of of very rare drops. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. What pretty, about you, man? Pretty awesome, actually. R- round us off, Sham. What, what's what's your view? Yeah, I, I think I think I'm mostly with you with you on this one, Simon. I think I think that like if we're like with your, your last point, actually, that if we're tying the, you know, bringing in a bunch of new faces and, you know, it's going to be exclusive. It's, we've got a, a short time, short term event. The crucial thing for me is that the way that you acquire this character, or there's two crucial things, I guess. The way that you acquire the character is not just like, OK, you know, open your wallet, spend huge tons of cash. Right. And that's that's number one. It's because that the whole point of it was to bring in a bunch of new players and we're not the expectation isn't to, isn't like, OK, well, you know, this is a free to play game. We want you as a part of our community. The first thing we do when you when you walk in the door, we're like, hey, can you. So that's the first thing. And I was, <laughs> can, you know, but then the 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 second thing I would say is that and, and maybe Raid is kind of kind of trying to address this, but it's like those cha- exclusive champions, if we're going to if we would have any exclusive champions can't be taking up a role that can never be then um, found you know, anywhere else, right? So if you, if you make it so like this champion just murders this boss and no other champion in the game can ever even compete with that, that's, ir- that's completely crazy. Like we can't, we can't never do that. So I'd say that's maybe the, the only caveat I would add to it. And, but that's, that's the way I feel about it. And yeah, but we'd, we'd love to hear what you guys think about it and, and maybe... Unless just you on that point else. you just said quickly, actually, sorry, it just popped into my mind now because I, I was um, checking something. That is exactly what Dragonair do. They don't make overpowered champions. And I think that's what Raid make a mistake with. They always mm. try to make their exclusive champions like so unique. Ninja, when he came out, was like the best boss killer in the game by quite a mile at the time yeah, until they released dragons. things like Acrisia yeah. and Nuke. Um, and even something like um, Sun Wukong, he's, like, he's everywhere in Arena because he's the only champion in the game that can do sheep. And then they add Rathalos that does like five million damage in one hit. So I think if we ever were to do it, we would absolutely have to make it so that it's a cool combination, but not an overpowered version of exactly. um, so that people don't feel like, you know, like a lot of people are so upset about the Nukagante Archer and Raid because it's so powerful for Hydra. It's like it's, it's by far one of the best champions, like probably top two in the entire game in it. So it's like when you you have that, like, oh, this champion's amazing, and then people go. You know, it's pretty awful. And it's also really bad for us content creators because we can never talk about the champion. Because right, right. the comments are like, well, there's no point. You've got this champion. What's the point of doing this video? What a waste of time. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. It's like, well, and, and it's just like you don't need to ruin the balance of your game to bring in new players. And if you do, there's something wrong with with what you're, what you're doing in the first place. Like the excitement that people have is for the collecting of this cool champion that's related to a to an IP, you know, if we're talking about these collaborations, that's related to an IP they're excited about. So you don't need to go like, okay, well, let's just make this character so overpowered. Like, because those players don't know. They don't, it doesn't matter for them. So it doesn't even really make sense to do that. It needs to be something that it's exciting for the players to get as like a, almost as a cosmetic. So it's, it's almost like in that in between. It's almost as a cosmetic, maybe with some cool tool, but they just, they should never be the absolute best crushing like you said uh you know bosses um and then no one else can replace that like, like i feel like that's that's just that's like out of bounds <laughs> foul we got a foul foul on the play here so yeah but you want to round us out i think i feel like that sure. i feel like we've we've kind of kind of got it down yeah yeah thanks for joining guys and uh yeah like we said earlier definitely pop into the discord server we hang out uh you know a few members from the team about once a month in voice chat where you have direct access to us and we go through every now and then we collect all of the feedback we summarize it and sometimes we do a youtube video on it. we'll probably do to do another one of those pretty soon here by the way uh to to go over some of the feedback we've received there so yeah we appreciate all of you joining us on this week's episode and we will see you soon in the next one thanks